This week we're talking all about focus with the help of Stunt Pig. Adorama TV presents Digital Photography One on One, where we answer your questions. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hey everybody, welcome to this week's episode of Digital Photography One-on-One. -on -one. Well this week, it's sort of a special week because we've got a lot of questions that we've been getting for months now about focus. And we haven't really had one that was broad enough to commit an entire episode to it, so we sort of smushed them all together. We're going to talk all about focus this week. So we're going to be talking about what a diopter does and what we can do to focus manually in low light and an autofocus assist beam and using different focus modes. We're going to be talking about all kinds of stuff. And to help us out, Stunt Pig's going to be here. So let's get right over to the next studio and get started. All right, well, the first thing we're going to do is talk about focus modes. And to help me out here, we have Kelsey, our producer, and Stunt Pig. And so what we're going to be doing is Stunt Pig is actually on rails. And so he's going to be moving along these rails toward my camera position. And so I'll, I will actually be shooting down here as Stunt Pig comes toward me. So what we're going to have is Kelsey's going to zip this down. So you can see the real speed that Stunt Pig's going to be going. So send Stunt Pig over. Wham! So he'll be coming at me just like that, and I will be shooting. And that way we can see exactly how Stunt Pig is in focus or out of focus. And to help us out, I've got a bunch of different cameras here. So I've got a couple of Nikons and a couple of Canons. So we can really dive into the different modes and how they're called on different cameras and some of the controls. Now some of the controls that I'll show you might not be in the exact same place on your camera. So make sure you look in your user manual because all cameras are a little bit different. But the principles will hold true for all cameras, all brands. So let's start. We have this, uh, this guy right here. This is a uh, Canon Rebel T3i. And what I'm going to do is first walk through the settings that I have on my camera. Now I'm shooting in manual mode. You can shoot in shutter priority mode or aperture priority mode. It doesn't really matter. I'm shooting in manual because we have a big white background and sort of weird lighting in here. And so I want to make sure that I have the proper exposure. So I'm shooting at a one hundredth of a second at 5.6. And I have that set for all of the cameras here. The other thing I'm doing is I have all the cameras set to shoot uh, high quality JPEG images. So none of these guys are shooting raw images. And I'll show you why that is important. Uh, a little bit later on. And the other thing that we have these cameras set up to is their drive mode is in continuous shooting mode. So I want to start there and show you that the drive mode is different than the auto focus mode. So the drive mode, uh, that is what allows you to shoot either one shot or a bunch of shots. So if I have my drive mode on continuous, which is what this is, I'll push down the button. And you can hear that that just shoots a bunch of pictures. If I had my drive mode set to a single shot, when I push down and held, I'd get one shot and that's it. So we have this on continuous mode just for the illustration of a uh, stunt pig coming at me. And so the drive mode and the autofocus mode, they're not the same thing. So try not to get those confused. Let's talk though about the autofocus modes. So the autofocus mode on this camera, this again is a Canon Rebel, on the right hand side there's a little button that says AF. Now if I push that, I have three options. I have one shot, I have AI focus, and AI servo. Now on a Nikon or a Sony or other brands of cameras, what you'll have is single, auto, and continuous. And they're different names, but they behave essentially the same way. So one shot or single allows you to focus on something and as soon as you're focused, the focus locks and it's stopped there. It holds that. So I'm going to put this over on one shot. And what we have right now is we have Stunt Pig about halfway down our rail here. And so I'm going to focus on him. And as soon as I focus on him, my focus actually locks in. And I get this really nice beep. So you can hear that beep. Here we go. So you hear that beep. So my focus is locking. And then I can take a shot. And I get a great shot of Stunt Pig. But if Stunt Pig is actually moving, so I'll sort of slowly have him move, Kelsey. There he is. So he's locked. But as he moves towards me, he is out of focus because the focus actually locked where he was the very first time. So what I need to do is have a focus mode that allows me to continuously focus as my subject is moving. Now it could either be my subject moving or it could be me moving forward and back from my subject. So what I do here is I'm going to push my autofocus mode and I'm going to put it to AI servo. Now that would be on a uh, Nikon or other brand. That would be continuous focus. Now what that does is as my subject is coming toward me, or if I'm moving toward the subject, the focus is constantly updating. So let's check this out. So uh, send Stunt Pig on down. So here he comes. 
Now, I'm just shooting as he's coming toward me. And what that's doing is the closer stunt pig gets, the uh, more the focus is adjusting. And so it works like that on our Canon camera. I'm going to grab really quickly. This is a Nikon D7000. The same thing. I have my camera set to manual mode, 100 at 5.6, ISO 800. And what I've done here is on the side of this camera, there's a little button. And when I push that on the top, I have my choices of single or continuous or something called continuous 3D. And on some cameras, you'll have that. You'll have that 3D continuous focus. And that is great for things that are moving forward or sort of at a diagonal because it sort of tracks that in space. And so that continuous focus 3D is really for things that are moving. So let's have Stunt Pig come at me one more time. Go ahead and send him down. Great. And you can hear that my camera was focusing really fast and tracking along with Stunt Pig with no problem. And we could grab, let's say, this is a uh, Canon 7D. Same kind of thing. I have my camera set to AI servo, same settings. And we'll do the same thing. So I'll send Stunt Pig over. OK, now you'll notice this camera is a little bit slower. So it's click, 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 click. Instead of the D7000, it was click, 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 click. And we even have one that's really fast. This is the Nikon D3S. So send this guy right on over. Go ahead. All right. And you can see that there are all different speeds of not only focus, but the drive mode. And that depends on the lens you're using and the camera body and the autofocus system that's built in. And so they're all different makes and brands. And so some are faster than others. Now, one thing that's true, if you use the center autofocus point on moving subjects, your autofocus will be faster. And a lens that's a really high end 2.8 or wider lens, like this is a 2.8 lens, this is a 2.8 lens, that is going to be much faster focus than a lens that's a, like, like this guy here, which is a 5.6 or 4.5, because those wider aperture openings allow the autofocus system to work much faster. And that's one reason that these high-end lenses are a little bit more expensive, actually a lot more expensive, because the autofocus is about twice as fast. Now, one more thing. Let's say you're shooting in RAW mode instead of uh, just JPEG mode. So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to change my quality on my uh, Nikon here. So I'm going to change this to RAW plus JPEG. Now before, this was pretty fast. Now listen what happens. So let's send Stunt Pig over as fast as you can. Go ahead. All right. That works pretty good. But at the end there, you heard that the camera just stopped. And what happened was that uh, card used up its buffer. So the images were going in, blam, 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 blam. Oh, I'm full. I can't store any more information. So if you're shooting really large files, you need a really fast card in your camera because there's going to become a point where the card can't take any more information. It's full, and it has to sort of save everything before it's ready to go again. In fact, let me just push this, and you can hear this uh, work like that. So it works just fine. And then it hits that little barrier. And then it just, I still have this held down. And it, see, it really slows down. So if you're shooting sports or something where you have your autofocus cranked, and you have your drive mode cranked, where you're shooting really, really fast, and you start to see all of a sudden something slows down, it's probably because your card can't keep up with all the information that your camera is sending its way. So you need either a faster card or you just need to slow down a little bit. All right, so that are the, those are the drive modes and the autofocus modes. Again, there's single focus mode, there's continuous focus mode, and there's one more we haven't talked about, and that is AI focus on a Canon and automatic on other brands. And what that does is it chooses for you. So it looks and says, is this thing moving or not? So let's say it's about halfway where Stunt Pig is now. And I'm going to put this camera on the middle autofocus, AI focus, or auto if it was a Nikon or Sony. And what I can do is when it's about halfway and our subject isn't moving, listen and you get that beep. So it's behaving like one shot. Um, so, or, or yeah, one shot focus. So it's focusing on that and it locks and it takes a picture. But if our pig was moving, so let's have pig move. Go ahead. It's going to continuously focus. So it detects if the subject is moving or not and chooses for you which mode is best. Now the question you have is, why wouldn't I always use that? Well, the reason you wouldn't always use that is because our cameras aren't so smart. And there are times where things can get out of whack. For example, let's say that Stunt Pig is at his birthday party and he's at a park and he's at the top of a slide. 
and we point our camera at him, and he's sitting there, and we focus, and our camera says, ah, Stunt Pig isn't, fo uh, isn't moving, because he's sitting at the top of a slide, and our camera locks, but then, all of a sudden, he starts moving, because he's coming down the slide. Well, now we're going to have an out-of-focus picture. So my suggestion is, just don't ever use that autofocus, AI uh, uh, focus, or the autofocus mode. Um, use instead one shot, or a continuous, or AI focus, um, or AI servo, sorry, so that you know exactly if you're shooting something that's moving or something that isn't moving, and just use those two and leave that auto mode. Uh, just don't use that. All right, well, now that we know about those focus modes, let's take a look at something else that will have a huge impact on your photography if you wear glasses or if your eyesight isn't totally great, and that's called the diopter. So let's look at that next. All right, now that we know about autofocus modes, let's talk about something that a lot of people don't even know exists, and that's called the diopter adjustment on your camera. Now, what that does is this little teeny knob that's up here, sometimes it's over here, but there's a little knob or a slider that's near your eyepiece, and what that does is it makes sure that what you see through your viewfinder is actually in focus. So the way you adjust this and the way you check to see if you're actually in focus is you just look through the viewfinder and look at the numbers and the autofocus points inside the viewfinder. They should be crystal clear. And if they're not, then you need to adjust this diopter. And the cool thing is that's made for people that don't have perfect vision, because most people don't, or if you wear glasses, well, you can adjust how your diopter works, and so it will be adjusted specifically for your eyes. Now, to do this, it's pretty simple. Just sort of look through this uh, eyepiece, and then what you're doing is you're looking at the numbers and the grid and the autofocus points, and you're moving this little dial right here until everything you see inside the numbers and the autofocus points, until those are crystal clear, and once they are, you know that your diopter adjustment is set correctly. Now remember, it's important that it's the numbers and the uh, grid or the autofocus points that are in focus, not necessarily what's coming through the lens. For example, Stunt Pig here wasn't even in focus when I was adjusting my diopter because I don't care if he's in focus, I care about what I see through the viewfinder, that that's in focus. Because if that's in focus and the diopter is adjusted correctly, well, when I start to use manual focus or use my autofocus, well, I can see if things are actually in focus or not and not be fooled by bad vision. Well, there's another thing that we really need to understand about focus, and that's the difference between focus and blur. Now, blur is caused by camera movement, and focus is caused by your camera will be out of, uh, out of focus. So let me show you the difference. So what I'm going to do here is I'm shooting in uh, shutter priority mode, and I've set my shutter to about 40th of a second, which is a slow shutter speed. And I'm going to take a picture of Stunt Pig here in focus. I'm not moving around. We can see that Stunt Pig is clearly in focus, and he looks great. Now, I'm going to put my uh, lens to uh, manual focus. In other words, I'm going to keep my same exact focus that I had before. So he's still in focus, but this time I'm going to shake my camera around. And when I do that, you can see that Stunt Pig here is now blurry. So he's not out of focus, he's blurry. One is caused by camera shake or a subject that's moving. The other is caused by improper focus. So let me show you what it looks like with him being improperly focused. I'll make sure he's out of focus. When we take a look at this, you can see that the background is focused, but he is not. They're two very different things, and you need to know the difference, because if you don't know the difference between blur and out of focus, well, you'll start calling all of your images blurry when some of them are out of focus and some of them are actually blurry, and you won't know if it's a focus issue that's the problem or if it's movement of the camera or the subject that's the problem. So you need to know the difference between those two. All right, well, let's talk about one other thing. We're going to zip over here. Now, what we have is we have a big, huge white piece of paper, and we have this thing that's called the focus target. And the last thing I want to talk about in this episode is how our camera focuses with the autofocus system. So I'm going to put this out of the way. And what this uh, has here is a huge problem because there aren't any lines. There is no contrast. It's just one big white solid mass. So if I have my uh, camera set to autofocus mode and I try to focus on this, well, it's not going to focus. It's just going to keep seeking focus. So the lens is going to go in and out and in and out, and it's not ever going to work because there isn't anything for it to grab a hold of. There is no contrast. There's no lines. There's no difference between the brightest and darkest area in the image. Now, this is a pretty uh, obvious example of this, but this happens when the light gets low in any kind of situation, maybe inside or outside at night. There's not enough light for the camera to see any contrast, and so your camera's going to have autofocus issues. So what you can do if you have an issue like this 
you can put what's called a focus target out here. So we have this little focus target right here, and now we have some contrast. We have black and gray and white with this little target. And now my camera is on the exact same setting. As soon as I hold it up, whammo, it focuses just like that. Now I'm using a specific autofocus point. We talked about that in episode 58. So if you need more information about autofocus points, make sure you watch that episode for everything to do with autofocus points. Now there's something else that I could do here if I needed to cheat. I could know that that's about four feet away. On my lens, if I'm using manual focus, so I'm looking through there manually focusing, making sure it looks sharp to me. I know my diopter's adjusted right. Well, there is a guide on here that says uh, how many feet away my focus is. So again, I know this is about four or five feet away. So I could set my lens to about four or five feet away. And so if I'm manually focusing and it looks like it's good, and I look down here and it says something like one foot or 20 feet, I know that I'm way off the mark because this isn't one foot or 20 feet away. And that's a good guide for me to know exactly how far away this is. Now, if you really want to know a little bit more about this guide on your lens, make sure you look at episode 55, where we talked about hyperfocal distance and that will help you understand how to use this guide on the top of your lens. Well, there's one more thing that we can use, and that is uh, a, a flash. So this flash here, this external flash, this is made for low light. And what it has built into it, and this is, uh, you can get these for Sony and for uh, Nikon cameras, Canon, all different brands of cameras. Most point and shoot cameras have this built in, so you don't need an external flash like this. In fact, a lot of uh, cameras have this built in, and it's called an autofocus assist beam. And so if this is having a hard time focusing, what this does, and I'm going to shine this right into the lens of our video camera here, you'll see that this thing kicks on and it sends an autofocus beam right at the lens. And that is telling the camera how far away our subject is. So it's saying, how far away is this? So if you're really, really in a dark environment, it's going to say, okay, here is our subject. The beam's going to go from here, hit this, come back, and the camera will know, oh, that's about six feet away and it'll adjust the focus to about six feet away and it'll get focus. So some of these autofocus assist beams can help you focus in almost pitch dark. And the cool thing is if you have one on an external flash like this, a lot of external flashes allow you to turn the flash off but leave the autofocus assist beam on so you're not actually using the flash, you're just using the autofocus assist and that will really help you out. Well, there you have it, all kinds of things about focus. Now we know about different focus modes, drive modes, how to change our diopter, focus low contrast things, using a focus target, and using an autofocus assist beam. So now that you know all that stuff, you can put that together to shoot in different scenarios, and you'll get nice, tack-sharp images every time. Well, thanks so much for joining me this week. Remember, if you have a question about photography, you can send it to me at askmark at adorama.com, and don't miss out on all the content we have at the Adorama Learning Center. So go over there, check it out, and also please subscribe to our channel so you don't miss a single episode. Well, thanks again for joining me, and I'll see you again next week. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue. Hi, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode of How They... What is this? I don't know TV. Digital photography. Stop juicing your biceps. We have things to do. Are you rolling? Whoa, that's scary. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I just think my shin is about to be obliterated. Digital photography one-on-one -on -one is written and produced by Snap Factory. For more information about our workshops, visit snapfactory.com.